every kilometer you have experience and that's can we build your win. You can't win in one day. Pressure is, it's just on me. You're just out there against the road book, against the machine, against the elements of the desert. You can't have the sunshine without the rain. You have to respect the desert because it's so easy to go fast. Competition is everything. I think competition is life. It's amazing to win the world champion and to, to defend our title. We look forward and we are ready to fight in there. I don't think anyone expects anything less of a win, even though it is my, my first year in T1 Plus. I'm a racer, so I'm gonna go out there and, and try to get first place. Welcome to the World Rally Raid Championship 2024. The big news in bikes this year is that the KTM group have opted out, but there are still plenty of world-class riders gunning for glory at the Dakar. Tosha Sharena was the revelation of 2023, but sadly crashed out on his first full stage with the Monster Energy Honda team. I crashed it slow, but I broke my wrist. Ross Branch quickly showed that he wasn't in Saudi Arabia to make up the numbers. The man from Botswana took the stage one victory and spent most of the first week in the overall lead. By rest day, he was only 51 seconds off the pace. Obviously, at the end of the day, we want to win the race. Nacho Cornejo also made a storming start on the new Honda, which quickly established itself as the bike to beat. The Chilean won two stages before the rest day and demonstrated his navigation prowess with a couple of excellent performances up at the front. He was fourth at the halfway stage. Sadly, Joan Barreda's debut for the hero team was cut short in the empty quarter. And no battery, and then the uh, bike is impossible to, to restart right now. Barreda wasn't the only one to say goodbye in the dunes. It was also game over for Skylar Howes due to mechanical issues. Meanwhile, Pablo Quintanilla's title bid was ended when he ran out of fuel. Adrian van Beveren came to the fore during the gruelling 48-hour chrono stage. The sand specialist flew over the dunes to win and get himself right back in contention overall. The bike is going amazing on those conditions and this is the kind of terrain I, I feel fast. But the fastest rider in week one was Ricky Brabeck, who was looking on ominous form. The 2020 winner riding smart and fast, he led Branch and AVB by the rest day. The bike's great, the team's looking good. I, I feel, I, mean, I don't need a rest day, I'm ready to go. Jean-Louis Le Pont was the leading Rally 2 rider after stage six, flying high in 10th place overall. The Frenchman moving up after his rival, Romain Dumontier, ran out of fuel. Manuel Andujar returned to Saudi Arabia with razor sharp focus. The Dakar 2021 winner leading quads and W2RC from stage four onwards. Two-time defending champion Alexandre Giroud playing catch-up 20 minutes behind. As ever, it was a stellar entry in the Ultimates class. Sebastian Loeb wouldn't be competing in the W2RC, but the likes of Nasser Alatia, Carlos Sainz and Yazid al Raji would all be fighting for honours. The first stage was won by Guillaume de Mevius, the Belgian entering his first Dakar in the ultimate class, so to win his first stage was a mighty impressive achievement.
On stage two, Mr. Dakar, Stefan Petter Hansel took a record equaling 50th Dakar stage victory in the cars. That brought him level with Ari Vatanen. But Nasser Al Atiyah had a day full of punctures. Lucas Moraes finished a superb third on his debut last year. On stage three, he took his first Dakar stage win, an emotional one at that. Well, I'm very happy. This had to go to my daughter, uh, this great result, because it has been a tough week, but all good now. Yazid Al Raji moved himself into the overall lead of the Dakar with a W2RC stage win on the fourth day of competition, thus becoming the first Saudi ever to lead the famous rally. Al Atiyah had a mixed start, but he demonstrated his undoubted pace on the short fifth stage, winning by almost two minutes to keep himself in contention. But the new 48-hour chrono stage turned the standings on their heads. Two days in the empty quarter became a race of attrition. First out, Yazid Al Raji. High speed and roll, part of game of Dakar. Stefan Petter Hansel had issues with his hydraulics, knocking him out of contention. And then Alatia was out of the running as well, for the Dakar at least. We try, you know, to play now for the for the world champion, you know. Matthias Ekstrom's Audi got stuck on a dune, but he and co-driver Emil Bergqvist recovered to finish second. But it was a W2RC stage win in the 48-hour chrono for Carlos Sainz, launching the 61-year-old Spaniard into the lead of the Dakar at the halfway stage. If you ask before the week if we were we leading, I would say I'm happy. Now it's still a long way. The teen on everybody's lips in the challengers, Eric Goxow. The Polish sensation with a dominant first week, his father and uncle equally impressive. The only potential challenger, Mitch Guthrie, who kept his cool and was second quickest by the end of stage six. But then it was all changed on the rest day. Eric and his uncle Michal were disqualified for a non-compliant composite on the clutch. The clutch disc was in carbon, and the carbon is a forbidden material in the challenger category for cost reasons. Non-conformity was uh, obvious. Despite four W2RC medals, car problems meant that Joao Ferreira was third at the halfway stage in the SSVs. Four podiums and one win saw the rookie Sarah Price lying second. The 31-year-old stunt woman taking to the Dakar challenge brilliantly. She was just three minutes down on the W2RC leader after six stages. And that leader was Yasir Sayadan. At the halfway stage, the MMP driver was also the Dakar's overall SSV leader, raising home hopes of a first Saudi champion. Back to the bikes now with Nacho Cornejo and Adrian van Beveren fading from the title conversation that the Frenchman would get his first overall podium. Ricky Brabeck and Ross Branch going head to head in the camel grass. They were separated by just a single second after stage seven. It's crazy, you know, but we still got a lot of racing to do. Yeah, that's pretty wild, huh? The hero and the Honda trading blows, but a couple of superb performances from Brabeck on stages nine and 10 saw him increase his lead to over 10 minutes. I'm 100% right now. The Americans speeding towards a second title with Branch just trying to hold on. There'd be no stopping Brabeck though, and his nearest rival ended up admitting that the better man had won. He's riding an, an amazing race. Brabeck taking victory with number nine, just as he did four years ago in his ninth Dakar to boot. He's the 13th biker to win multiple Dakar titles. He's also the early W2RC leader ahead of Branch and his own Honda teammates. 
Roman Zumontier finished as the highest rally two rider in the W2RC, even if the Dakar victory went to Sherco's Harit Noah. The defending champion had some ups and downs, but held on to finish 12th overall. Here's how the Rally 2 boys line up after round one of five. The Dakar title and W2RC lead came down to two quad gladiators on the final stage. Manuel Andujar finished just 15 seconds behind the special winner, Alexandre Giroud, but he dethroned the two-time defending champion by eight minutes. My, my team is the best team here. They make an excellent job, so that's it. His second Dakar title and an eight-point advantage in the W2RC. A new tattoo to come in 25. At the start of stage seven, Matthias Ekstrom was out of the running in the Ultimates due to mechanical failure, but the Swede rallied and won the day on stage eight. I enjoyed from the beginning to the end. We had no big hiccups, so you know, it, was a, it was a good day. The next big name to fall, Nasser Alatia. I am really disappointed, you know, because uh, I don't uh, really enjoy a lot uh, this Dakar because uh, from very day we have always a problem, you know. But while others fell by the wayside, Carlos Sainz kept picking up consistently strong finishes. And even when he ran into trouble, El Matador had his Audi teammates there to support him as he held the lead with a few days to go. After a tricky start, Gelan Shishiri was flying as he won stage 10. A stage victory is always nice. I've been chasing it quite some time. Feels good. I've moved up two places overall. We're fifth, and that's exactly where we want to be. Shishiri then doubled up, winning stage 11 as well. Guillaume de Mevius had a superb Dakar. He finished second overall in his first entry in the T1 class. But nobody could get anywhere near Carlos Sainz, who won for the Audi team by well over an hour. With his son Carlos Jr. in Saudi to cheer him home, Sainz picked up his fourth win at the Dakar, all of them with different manufacturers. The veteran Spaniard thus leads the W2RC ahead of Demevius and Shishiri. Mitch Guthrie was on the comeback in the challenges in week two, while Nico Cavigliasso and his wife Valentina also thrived with two W2RC stage wins. It wasn't the Dakar Rocas Pachuska was hoping for, but he did come second in the W2RC. Guthrie suffered final day heartbreak with Cristina Gutierrez pipping him to the Dakar title, but he did keep his lead in the World Championship. Guthrie has a 17-point lead on Bachuska with Marcelo Gastaldi in third. Joao Ferreira was flying after two straight stage wins, but this stopped his title charge in its tracks. We lost the fuel pressure and we have to change the fuel pump. Others also had huge highs and bitter lows. Sarah Price came of age with victory on stage 10, collecting her medal alongside her boyfriend and the Dakar champion, Ricky Brabeck. I think it's crazy that there's only been three females to ever win this, you know. In my book, there should have been more by now. A place on the overall podium dashed when Price ran out of wheels. The emotions were predictably raw. Only sunshine and smiles, though, for Saudi sensation Sayadan, a home driver on the overall podium. Xavier de Sultre celebrated a first Dakar title, while Sayadan leads the championship from Sarah Price. Thanks for joining us for round one of the World Rally Raid Championship. Congratulations to all of our winners, and we'll see you in Abu Dhabi.